Hello, I'm Denton Davidson, Senior Editor for Gold Derby, and I'm excited to be joined by Adam Scott, the star of Severance on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, Adam, this is one of the most mind-bending, buzzwordly new shows, and it's because it's actually an original idea with a really intriguing plot. So what were your initial thoughts when you got the script, and, and who presented it to you? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, ben Stiller called me back in January 2017 um, and just told me sort of the the a big idea of the show, the elevator pitch of the show, and didn't have much more uh, to tell me than that. He just said, there's this thing. I met this guy, Dan Erickson, who has this really cool show idea um, and is a really great writer. And I think you would be great for it, but we're in super beginning stages. So I just want to put that bug in your ear. And, uh, and I just couldn't stop thinking about it for the next couple of years. Cause I didn't actually see a script, um, for two and a half years, something like that. It was like the fall of 2019, something like that, or maybe a little before whatever it was, it was a couple of years later. And they sent me, I think two scripts. Um, and I just remember reading them and just my, my immediate reaction was, this is exactly the sort of thing I run to as an audience member. This is the stuff I like to, to watch and have since I was a kid and I discovered Twilight Zone. And, um, and I just felt like if I'm able to actually land this job, if I'm able to like get this uh, this, this role, um, it'll be the, the previous like 20 some odd years, uh, w w will have been to earn this opportunity and earn this, this, uh, this job. And, uh, and so luckily I, I, <laughs> I was able to, 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 to get it and, and, uh, be a part of it. Um, Dan Erickson, who you said, mentioned created the show and I recently met him yeah. and uh, at a QA and a and he said people might not believe him but he said you were the first actor he sort of envisioned in the role and then Ben Stiller said the same thing so I'm curious like for you first of all can you tell me who Mark is and then second of all tell me why everyone would want you to to play that role man uh I don't I don't know. I'm so happy that they did, though. Uh, yeah, Mark uh, Scout is an employee of the Lumen Corporation. And uh, Lumen is sort of one of those companies that has just kind of feels like it's always been there, like you're eating your morning cereal, kind of absentmindedly looking at the box. And you're like, wait a second, don't these guys make my light bulbs? Like they're just sort of they've always been there and they kind of do everything. And they, they're in technology uh, as well. And they've come up with this procedure where you can bifurcate your memories. So uh, you, you have a, a chip implanted in your brain. So when you cross a threshold of your job, uh, you have no idea who you are in the outside world. You have no access to, to the memories of the outside world. And then when you leave and cross the threshold to go home, uh, you have no idea what you did at work. You have no memories, no access to those memories. So you're essentially leading uh, two different lives. So Mark uh, Scout just recently took this job because he lost his wife uh, just a couple of years ago and he is not getting over it. Uh, and so he's chosen to go to this place where he can sever and basically just not exist for eight to 10 hours a day. Uh, so his life is essentially waking up, eating breakfast, driving to work, and then immediately driving home from work, eating dinner, drinking too much and going to sleep. And so he has uh, situated himself so he doesn't have to feel uh, for uh, most of the day. Uh, uh, Monday through Friday. And that is how he likes it. He's been doing it for a couple of years and he's uh, comfortable with it. He's, he's found, uh, he's found a way to, to get through uh, all of this, this pain he's feeling. 
what is it about the character of Mark that draws you in as an actor? And what, you know, what qualities do you like about him? What, what annoys you about him? You know, what makes you want to play that role? Well, something that was really interesting was being able to play the two different sides of, of the character, two different sides of, of Mark. And, and it was important to, to us early on, to Dan and, and to, to Ben Stiller and I, Dan Erickson, the creator, Ben Stiller, the director, and I, that it feel like it's the same guy that it, because it, it is tempting to, you know, if you're playing two different sides of a person uh, to, to make them, you know, you know, I, I want this one to like have a mustache and, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, wear a tuxedo, whatever it is, it's really, but it was important for this that they feel like um, the same the same guy, almost two halves of the same person. Um, because one of them is uh, is you know has forty some odd years of of life experience of grief and happiness and joy and sorrow and all of the stuff that goes with a full uh, life and and then the any mark is essentially two and a half years old. Um, and they share physiological things. There are feelings that sort of get transferred back and forth, but they don't know how to name them or, or, or pinpoint what they are or where they're coming from. Uh, but other than that, they are completely separate and it manifests itself in, in different ways, uh, physically and, and vocally and stuff. But it it was uh, important that we that we really pinned it down as the the same guy, the same person. And Ben Stiller's directing you. You both have some similarities in that you've been known for a lot of comedy, and I think when you do yeah. comedy so well, it can often you know people can overlook how much drama that has been done as well. Yeah. Um, but this is, I mean, sci-fi twisted a little dark it has humor as well is that one of the reasons that you were pulled into it is like it 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 does bring you somewhere else and allows you to do more than what you're always allowed to do yeah for sure i was um right after parks and rec ended i was looking for um some uh s something more dramatic to do just to just to change it up a bit and uh so I auditioned for Big Little Lies. I really wanted to be a part of that and luckily got got the role in that. And, and it was um, an incredible experience. Jean-Marc Vallée is an incredible filmmaker and, and of course working with Reese and, and all those incredible actors. Uh, uh, and it was really fun and it was something I hadn't done in a while and it, it made me really thirst for, for more of that. So I'd been looking for for something else and um dipping into the genre a little bit and i i love science fiction uh and um and so this really was uh kind of everything i'd wanted to do like i said when i was a kid i i got really into the twilight zone when all i had was a i had a five inch black and white tv with rabbit ears so i got you know three channels sometimes just two yeah. and every night 11 they played twilight zone so those stories and the economic economic way they presented those stories it was like 25 minutes and they fit the, just the greatest ideas and stories and things that just the whole next day at school i'd be thinking about uh the twilight zone i'd seen the night before um and that was the kind of science fiction that really uh that that really kind of um sparked my imagination and and part of what made me want to be an actor is to be a part of stuff like that so uh this was was really really uh really kind of fit the bill for something that was a little more dramatic of course there's humor in it and stuff but but also this really kind of mind bendy uh world um uh, that that it brings you into and world building, kind of building out this new uh, reality. It was really fun. Yeah. And Mark works closely with Dylan, played by Zach Cherry, Irving, yeah. and John Turturro, love him, and Hallie, who is introduced to them as their new co-worker in the first episode, and she's played by Britt Lauer. 
Um, what was that like to just play with that, you know, quartet in the quad, in that creepy little office, you know, playing back and forth with that ensemble? Well, it was so much fun. Um, and it, it's so strange how like reality kind of was mirroring the show in a way because we were right in the midst of, of the pre-vaccine pandemic uh, and where, when production was just getting back up on its feet. Everyone was trying to figure out how to do this. Um, and the, the entire crew had masks on. When the cameras weren't rolling, we had masks and shields over our faces. And, and so uh, John and, and Zach and Britt and Tramel and Patricia and Christopher Walken were like the only people we got to see without masks. Any of us got to see without masks for these limited chunks of time while, while the camera was rolling. Um, and so it, it created this, this sort of, uh, this atmosphere of, uh, of this sort of new energy that I feel kind of brought something to, to the piece because we were, um, it was sort of this pressurized environment that I think everyone everywhere was feeling right in the middle of, of, uh, of the pandemic, uh, or relatively early on in the middle of the pandemic like that. Um, and, you know, I couldn't ask for uh, a, a better, more incredible group of actors to, uh, to work with. I mean, I've been wanting to work with John Turturro and Patricia Arquette and Christopher Walken for my whole career. I've been fantasizing about what it would be like to, uh, to work with them. And so getting to do that was, was pretty unbelievable. And Patricia Arquette, her character, it really intrigues me because, yeah. uh, and she is a force of nature, um, just like oh, everything she's been doing the last few years. I mean, she gets better and better as the series goes along. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, she's harmony on the inside, Mrs. Selvig on the outside. She's a liar in both worlds. I don't know what she's up to. Um, so yeah. yeah, she's also like quick to, to react, quite a temper. So what was it like just going toe to toe with her in those scenes, just looking her in the eye and, and watching her sort of just eat him alive? It was, I mean, I, I could, I really couldn't believe I was, <laughs> I was getting to, to do that, to, to work with her and have such meaty, just beautifully written fun scenes uh, to do together. Um, you know, she's one of my, favorite actors and Dan Amaro was so so unbelievably good I I think I've now seen all of Escape from Dan Amaro seven times um <laughs> I watched it when it was on and then getting ready to work with Ben and Patricia I just it's just so I think it's a, a masterpiece uh uh so yeah those scenes with Patricia you know she's a really exciting uh actor to watch, really exciting to work with too, because you're you're never sure. Uh, I was never sure what exactly she she was going to do. Every take was different, um, and you know, Mark is never sure what uh, Ms. Cobell is going to do. Nor is Audi Mark ever sure what Ms. Selvig is going to do. Ms. Selvig is this very strange next door neighbor that over the course of the season, he slowly starts to have this affinity for and slowly starts to uh, become emotionally dependent on a little bit. I mean, she completely manipulates Mark in both the, uh, the any world and the Audi world, but so skillfully, um, both the character and, uh, and the actor, Patricia, uh, was so meticulously and skillfully manipulating uh, Mark and Adam uh, <laughs> over the course of the season. Yeah, I, I just I was devastated when we when we finished the the season because those scenes uh, with Patricia were were so much fun. I I was always so happy when when I got to when I got to work and and I had a scene with Patricia. I can't wait to get back to it. Do you guys ever break or, or like, I mean, 
Oh yeah. Either when like this, just the pure rage that she has to me, sometimes it was, it was funny, like, cause she was just furious or like, how about like the dance, the dancing? Where do these people learn to dance? I love when Milchek is because he's like the hunky security guard until you find out that he's the disciplinarian and and not such a nice man but he comes yeah. in with his dance party what was that whole scenario like well it was really fun because um i mean we of course knew what the what the scene was but it wasn't until we were rolling and shooting the scene that ben turned on the like disco lights and all the like fluorescent lights that had been imp- oppressing us for nine months in that room because the the carpet is this this bright green and the ceiling is weirdly low in there so you really are just beaten to death by this these fluorescent lights all day as you would be in uh in, in a uh, an office environment and so but he he we didn't none of us knew that it was all outfitted for disco lights as well so when milchik turns the remote on and those lights start up our reactions are very real reacting to the wonder that is these lights not only are we as actors surprised but these people have never seen something like this before nor have they probably really danced before i know that i, I what what i had in mind was that mark had been hearing about the MDE, about the music dance experience, but he'd never actually uh, experienced it and wasn't sure if it was rumor or if it was something that that uh, that would uh, that, that that was actually real. Um, so, getting to uh, try and dance as someone who probably hasn't danced before was was really really uh, really fun. And then at the end, but John. By the way, John oh. Turturro is such an incredible dancer that he, that Ben had to have him tone it down over and over <laughs> again because he's such a such a beautiful dancer. <laughs> I wish we could see uh, some of the outtakes of that. Um, oh yeah, there are many. <laughs> and so when Helly gets in there, um, she's sort of like a little angered about being inside off the bat. And the other three are sort of resigned to what they're doing. Um, I found that a little bit fascinating. Do you think that they had just been beaten down and convinced of that? Or do you think they were just more receptive than she was going in? And, you know, was she what they needed to sort of get that curiosity of, you know, what is on the outside world and what are we doing here? Yeah, I think that... uh that these three guys that uh, Dylan and, and Irving and, and Mark uh, have been there. Mark's been there for a couple of years and he's just never really questioned uh, what he's doing there. I think everyone, when they wake up in this place and they don't know where they are or what they're doing, they have a moment of questioning, like what is going on here? Um, but are immediately given a, uh, certain set of answers and a certain philosophy of why they're there and what they're doing. And uh, Mark has just chosen to go along with this and actually has faith in Cure and uh, and believes in this, this doctrine that's been put in front of him. And it isn't until Heli comes in and just starts questioning it. And then alongside that, he discovers uh, Rickon's book and so, and also seeing how Heli is treated and how Petey, his friend who was there up until the moment the show starts, how Petey's dismissed and Heli is treated by uh, uh, Ms. Cobell sort of disillusions him. Those four things all mm-hmm. happening at the same time is sort of this perfect storm to start this disillusionment. Uh, and Mark, uh, where he starts to question uh, what he's doing there and and the whole the, the place as a whole. And I think once you start asking those questions in a place like that, it's a uh, it just sort of snowballs and it's a house of cards and you just you 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 can't stop. It just one thing leads to the other and uh, and it's it's hard to turn that uh, that ocean liner around once it starts. 
Yeah. And then we get to the end. It's such a cliffhanger. You know, we learned some interesting thing, things about Helly's life. It's for me, it was interesting to see that she seems to be sort of a power player to be inside in a position that she's in. So I'm interested to see how that goes. And then Mark, um, of course, discovers what his wife looks like in, in that picture frame and, and kind of comes to some conclusions, but yeah. um, are you just being swarmed now with, you know, what's, what's happening next and are people harassing you at every chance they can wondering, you know, what's happening? Yeah, I think people <laughs> want that season two, uh, like now, that's, yeah. that's mostly what, what I'm getting is that having to wait for it is, is a bummer. And I, I agree, I, I would love to, uh, to be able to, to, to serve up episodes right now, for sure. Um, <laughs> but I can't wait to, uh, to get back to it. I mean, I think right when the season ends, you know, Mark has become disillusioned with, with Lumen and, uh, and Ms. Cobell, but I don't think he had any clue the, the depths uh, that, they, that they may be willing to go. And so when he sees that photo, uh, the bottom sort of falls out and he would have never would have imagined that they would do something like that, that something like that would even be possible. Right. So I think it's a, it's a, uh, it's a really big moment for him that we're in the middle of uh, when, when the season ends. Well, we can't wait for, for the next season. And um, Adam Scott, congratulations on severance. Best of luck to you, the whole cast, Thank you. the writers, the entire crew at this year's Emmys, you know, best of luck. And thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. 